morning. The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Bond does Deutschland. It's Kirsty Bond in Germany. Indeed, it is. It is Kirsty Bond, ex producer of the Breakfast Show right here on Kiwi, now living and making a life in Germany. Hello, good to you, Kirsty. Hi there. How's it going? Very well. Very well. Still, um, still nice summer times over there. Actually, the weather's taken a bit of a turn for the worst since I was last talking to you, complaining about how hot it was. We've suddenly had a, a couple of weeks of rain and drizzle, and it's reminding me of winter back home in New Zealand. Ah, just as we're Hopefully entering. summer does return, though. Just as we're entering spring. The daffodils I noticed um, out around my place, place yesterday. So there you go. Oh, Nature's telling us something. You. The change is on. And here we've got autumn leaves appearing. So there you go. Mm. And, of course, um, one of the big things, of course, that, that has happened in Europe over summer is the various festivals around, uh, around the place, the various music festivals. And there was a big one in uh, Germany, wasn't there? T- tell us about the one that went wrong. Oh, did it ever, yes. This love parade's been going on since 1989, actually. It used to be held in Berlin, and I'm sure you would have heard all about it. It turned into a catastrophe. This year it was held in a city called Duisburg, and it's supposed to be a great celebration of love and techno music and peace and happiness, and it wasn't quite to be this year, unfortunately, due to a whole range of um, factors that are now being analysed in the aftermath. So you'll be well aware that 21 people died and about 500 people were injured in like a what you'd call a stampede, I guess. Mm. Um, it, the setup of this concert was in such a way that there was a tunnel that people had to enter into to get into uh, the, the area where the bands were playing. And the same tunnel was being used as the exit point. So in, in the middle, you had these people trying to get go in one direction, other people trying to go in the other direction, and it all just turned into a, a big nightmare with people um, falling down and trampling on each other and that kind of thing. Which is real a tragic, terribly tragic event. But it's all, of course, in the aftermath in these sort of situations, you can imagine that the authorities are all pointing the finger at each other. Well, yeah, an initial um, police report pointed the finger at the organisers, and it does seem like um, they were determined to push ahead with this, even though they knew that this area. Um, was only supposed to hold 250,000 people Mm. and they were estimating that there would be a lot more than that there. Um, So it looks like the police have uh, are also not squeaky clean. They've played a role in this as well. And so they've they're now in the middle of a full investigation which has been taken over by the police of another city obviously because the police involved in Duisburg um, would have a conflict there. Mm. But um, finger is also being pointed at the mayor who a year ago when the the festival was supposed to take place in another city and was cancelled he said we want the festival this year and we will do whatever we can um to 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 host it and the party will not be cancelled by us no matter what and made these kind of statements so he was determined to go ahead with this event uh this time round and um People are now calling for his resignations, although, although he's he's saying he's waiting until the result of the investigation before he would make such a move. He has said that he's had to move his family out of the city due to death threats, wow. though, mm. and had somebody call him saying that they'd been paid five thousand euros to kill him, and another person saying that they would blow up a kindergarten if he didn't resign. So, so of course, a, a course that makes sense. Going on. That makes sense. That the link between oh, the kindergarten yeah, exactly. and the mayor. Kill yeah. the children. That'll help things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is terrible, golly. Um, so obviously that investigation uh, is still going to take a um, a long, long time, Kirsty. Yeah, and it also looks like um, the whole they were aware of of this uh, tunnel being a potential problem in the first place, and they had even stationed at the in, at the foot of the tunnel a container in which a, a crowd control officer sat, monitoring about sixteen different cameras, and next to this crowd control officer was a policeman but not a policeman who was authorised to actually make any calls so when this crowd control officer started getting a bit worried due to the pictures that he was seeing on the film um, he wanted to make contact with somebody higher up the chain but he didn't have a direct line to Mm. anybody higher up the police chain and so they had to try and reach them with a mobile phone and because it's it's a music festival and these, you know, everybody's trying to use their mobile phone, the network didn't connect him through 
So there's a whole lot of things going on behind the scenes and it, it all just culminated into a one big disaster. Yeah, always a string of events. So many lessons to be learnt. Kirsty Bond, mm. thanks very much for your time this morning. You're welcome. That's Kirsty Bond joining us in Germany, Bond in Deutschland, if you will. Uh, it's